should I go for something in the pre-construction market from the builder or should I go for something in the resale market and try to find a good deal? That's a million dollar question many buyers are facing nowadays and it's a good problem to have having too many choices which was not the case just in the recent past. But having said that, it's important to have you know, good understanding of both the options. That's what we're going to get granular into right here in this video. I'll share my two cents about both the options and we'll weigh the pros and the cons. And at the very least, you will get some hands-on perspective to help you arrive at a decision that's right for you and your family. So stay tuned as you get right into it. Hello and welcome. If this is your first time to this channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Kitchener, Cambridge and Waterloo, then subscribe below and tap on that bell for notifications so you can be the first to learn about the current market in and around Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo. My name is Dal McDixit. I'm a local real estate agent serving Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo and surrounding areas. I do get calls, texts, emails from people just like you who are looking for help in making their move to Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo and surrounding areas and I absolutely love it. So whether you're thinking of moving in 9 days or 90 days, be sure to reach out. You can give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or you can even schedule a Zoom call. All the info you will find right below in the description. I'll be more than happy to help you make a smooth move in and around Kitchener, Ontario. One of the common misconceptions I hear from the buyers all the time is that, you know, I'll be able to get away with a significant price discount from the builder and might be able to negotiate a good price because builders are under pressure right now to move the inventory of their shelves. Well, I can tell you that's usually not the case. And I'll explain to you in a moment. But the reason I'm saying so, you know, unlike a resale market where let's say you're dealing with an individual seller who has, let's say, already bought something and now they have to move and close that property that they've already bought, you might be able to get away with some good deals in the resale market with the seller. But unlike that, builders are not really under intense pressure to move those lots. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, if you look at, and if you have bought a pre construction home in the past, you might know this. The way builders work is, you know, they do those phased release of lots. So as a buyer, you will then go and pick a lot that you want. And then you pick a floor plan that goes on that lot. And then you enter into an agreement of purchase and sale. And after that conditional phase, having your financing arranged, having your you know agreement reviewed by the lawyer, all those stuff, you will then, you know, it becomes a firm and binding deal. And you start doing those phase deposits, whatever that deposit structure is. At that point, builder, you know, you will have 18 to 24 months closing, somewhere between that. I mean, majority of the time, it's around 18 months. Some builders might be able to get you up to 24 months, but unless it's a condominium apartment building, majority of the homes being closed within that 18 to 24 months of the agreement being signed. That's usually the possession date. So what I'm trying to say is at that point, after the deal becomes firm, is when the builder will start building on that lot. So it's very important for you to understand as a buyer is that they're not building and then selling the homes. They're actually selling you the lots and then they are building that for you as they gradually collect those deposits from you, which is typically collected within 12 months time, whatever that 10 to 15%. I mean, first time home buyers, many builders are working with the first time home buyers with 10% deposits. But if you're not a first time home buyer, then majority of the builders are asking about 15% deposits nowadays in the current market. So that's very important for you to understand. And if I were to take it a step further, a, you know, this is where I'm getting a bit technical, but uh, you know, if you look at the construction loans uh, a little bit in details, they're more like a drawdown loan. So uh, it's the way it works is, let's say a lender has given an X amount of money to the builder and that's available to the builder, but they're not paying on it a carrying cost or an interest. Once, let's say they have sell, sold you the lot, then the builder has the ability to draw from that loan and then start building. So only as they draw on the loan, they will start paying interest on it. So there's not a huge carrying cost for the builder to sit on those lots for a longer time. And that's the reason why you as a buyer may not be able to get away with a huge discounts on those lots or those pre-construction homes. If you are indeed buying a pre-construction home, one of the important things that's worth noting for you is you always wanna have that buffer of around 5% of the purchase price for not just the closing cost, but you know anything leading in between from the time you have signed that agreement of purchase and sale till the date of closing. Because, you know, uh, to give you an example, there are some simple costs that are associated with the pre-construction homes. That includes cost of appliances as you take on the possessions. Uh, air conditioning is another one. Although nowadays, some builders are offering some great deals uh, and some incentives to lure the buyers in this low market. But we'll get to that in a moment. But what I'm trying to say is, even as you go into that design phase, uh, many of the finishes, standard finishes offered by the builders, you know, including the paint colors, you may not like 
a lot of them and you may choose to kind of you know upgrade to something that you like and that might come at a cost so from the base purchase price that you've entered into to the time you get through the design phase there might be some finishes you have picked let's say instead of uh, you know regular standard lights you might have picked a pot lights in the living room or a fireplace or you know some layout changes all those things will definitely add up for you and that's why you always say like when you buy a pre-construction home at least have a buffer of about five percent so you're not catching yourself by surprise when you finally close the home now furthermore to add to that about those incentives we briefly talked about earlier it's very important for you as a buyer especially with the amount of options you have in this market with the builders as well very important to weigh your options around those you know incentives being offered by the builder what i'm saying is you know understand the cost of those incentives and you know and the value of those incentives because there are you know some builders offering anywhere from like waived lot premiums offering you to finish the basement at no cost uh, those are some of the major incentives i can tell you uh, lot premiums are, you know they sometimes run into tens of thousands of dollars and same with the finished basement for example some other builders are offering things like oh we'll have the appliance package included will have the air conditioning included. I mean, yes, obviously those things do have value, but you know, at the most you're looking about 10 to $12,000 for both of those combined appliance package and the air conditioning for your home. So weigh your options and really understand what are really the benefits. Uh, one of the other ones I've seen common is the assignment clause being included at no cost or at a nominal fee of let's say five or 10,000 by many builders. So again, as a buyer, I mean, we don't know where the market is heading as of right now. So if you are uncertain about where the market is heading, you do want to have that option to assign at a nominal cost, unlike many builders who are simply not offering that option. So it's very important for you to understand what the incentives you have on the table with each of the builders and really weigh your options in terms of the value you are getting from those builders. And then accordingly, you can choose to go with a particular pre-construction home. And that's where, again, even when you're buying a pre-construction home, Working with a local professional will really help you and add value to this transaction for you. And before you do any of this, what I would recommend for you to do is to actually speak with a local mortgage professional you're working with because they will help you understand how the pre-construction mortgages are done differently and qualified differently than that of the resale mortgage. For example, if you buy something in the resale market that's closing in 60 to 90 days versus if you were to buy something in the pre-construction market that's closing, let's say 18 months to two years from now, the way those mortgages are getting qualified is much different. And the future dated rates are typically higher than the current rate. So let's say they might be around eight or eight and a half percent. With the stress test in place, you as a buyer now will have to qualify for close to 10% mortgage rate. So that significantly reduce your mortgage eligibility and your ability to qualify for the amount certain amount of mortgage might be lower than what you are able to afford in a resale market and that's where it gets tricky for you and i can tell you nowadays majority of the renowned builders i know have a clause embedded in their agreement of purchase and sale clearly stating that within that typical 30-day period you will have to provide them with a firm commitment letter of financing from the bank so it's not a pre-approval, it's a firm commitment letter with a future date, date on it, typically your closing date, with a fixed whatever the interest rate may be and the amount of your mortgage. So they want, the builders actually want that, you know, within 30 days time of you accepting the offer on both ends. And that's where it gets tricky. If you're not able to get through that, then, you know, after all this work that you have put into selecting the lot, going through the builder or providing a deposit, and then you finally go to a mortgage lender only to find out that this is the case, it'll be heartbreaking. So I would say do this first and the rest of the steps you can do later because it might, you know, you might have to adjust your budget depending on what you hear from your lender. And like I said, these are firm commitment letters, not the pre-approvals. Builders are not working with the pre-approval letters anymore in majority of the cases. So just be aware of that. Now, these are some of the things worth noting for you as a buyer in the pre-construction market. I mean, there's no harm in going with the pre-construction market, but just be aware of the things that are different than you buying something in the resale market, because many of these things oftentimes catch the buyers by surprise. There are obviously some great deals happening in the pre-construction market. There's no doubt about that. There are some great incentives being offered by the builders. I mean, you know, even in the assignment market, like many buyers who are not able to close themselves, there are some great deals available in the assignment uh, sale as well right now. Uh, I saw some builders actually offering uh, homes that buyers will not able to close. We see it on MLS 
and being offered by the builders themselves with a quick closing. So there are some good options available in the pre-construction home and there are obviously some pros. I mean, you get to pick uh, a brand new home, you get to pick your finishes and the layout and everything that you like to your taste versus the resale home. You might have to obviously settle for a few things here and there depending on uh, the overall quality uh, and the neighborhood and depending on your taste and the preference. Now, having said that, I mean, resale market uh, we have been seeing like, you know, quite a bit of a rush and the activity in that six to 800,000 price range. That's where we see the majority of the noise nowadays. I'm sitting as of like December, 2023. And I can tell you, we had like three offers last week on uh, three different homes. And one of them had a town home in Dune South had 13 offers. We had one more with five offers by the uh, Lackner Woods. And there was an older detached bungalow in uh, Country Hills neighborhood. And we had 17 offers on those homes, like on that home. So that tells you like all these three homes that I mentioned ranged between that 600 to 800,000. So that's what I said, as you cross that 800,000 price point, And if you're a buyer beyond that, let's say your budget is over 800, you will find market to be very quiet. And that's where you might see it's pretty much a buyer's market, but six to 800,000, it's still like a balanced market. Um, as you approach that million dollar, it's pretty much like dead silent. I mean, there's not a lot happening in that price range. But having said that, just weigh your options between the pre-con and the resale market and see what's the right fit for you and your family, your financial situation, because all these factors will have to come to play to help you arrive at a decision. But nonetheless, I hope you did get some value. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and tap on that bell for notification so you can be the first to learn about the current market in and around Kitchener, Ontario. Once again, whether you're thinking of moving in nine days or nine days, be sure to reach out. All the info right below in the description. I'll be more than happy to help you guys make a smooth move in and around Kitchener, Ontario. Until next time, well, I do hope to show you around town.